So every time I said yes, I got a pint of Guinness. So uh, <laughs> I did wake up with a bit of a hangover and uh, Paul did say to me, oh, Peter, you know that you're starting tomorrow. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Peter Muller, welcome to Throwing Stones. How are you? All good, all good. I mean, it's uh, been a long time, you know, um, I'd say it's from, I think, 89 or 90 or, yeah, uh, yeah so it's been a long time to hear a, a proper Irish accent again. <laughs> Hopefully you can understand everything I'm saying. Um, but thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, really, really excited to talk to you about uh, your memories playing for, for Greystones and then playing with South Africa as well. So, I mean, let's let's get let's go straight to it. Um, you went to Grey College, Bloemfontein, which is a factory for producing future Springboks. Uh, we have uh, Naka Drotsky, Ruben Kruger, Ali Larue, Duplessis brothers, Franz Stein, Rune Pinar. Um, but I think for you, you become uh, recognized around the country following a successful Craven Week with your school. But can you just explain to us how Craven Week works? Because I think it's a concept that's unique to South African rugby, isn't that right? Yeah. yeah so I, th I think if I go back, you know, um, to maybe Craven Week, it's, it was started by Donnie Craven, that was the guru of South African rugby. And he was to, wanted to develop, I think, school rugby and, you know, to get them to play at a high level. Um, so what's happened in, in, in South Africa, when you get to a high school, and that's normally from about 14 to 18, uh, in our time, it's in the 80s, and it sounds a long time ago, um, we only had the Kramer Week, but lately what they have is for under 16s and under 18s, so they've got two weeks, but it's almost preparing, you know, from under 16 to under 18, then to play in provincial teams together, similar like, you know, we play the Curry Cup in South Africa, um, and they compete, and then from there they normally pick uh, in the in the early eighties and nineties they will do you know like a SA school side, um, but you know because of you know but apartheid and we couldn't travel, we either had to play either a combined side or we went to uh, in Namibia there was an army because there was still a war in Namibia against Angola, so we'll play some army side up there in in, in Bento. So that's uh, that's how you only maybe play one or two games in, in that, yeah. you know, but where I think today um, they've got an 19 tournament, you know, where most of the school play, the players will play in a, you know, mini uh, World Cup and or, you know. Wow, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you made you made the, the, the SA schools team two years in a row. Uh, but I think the big step up for you came in 1990 when you were picked for the Free State, which yeah. I suppose today would be the, the Cheetahs. Um, you have a funny story about uh, learning your selection for the for the Free State team. Do you, do you want to share it with us? Oh, the Free State side, oh yeah. Um, I'll, I'll maybe just go a step back, you know. You, you know, I think um, talking about Greystones, um, when I when I came over, you know, it was, there was no opportunity, I think, and, you know, with the Free State and, you know, you played a couple of games, but you're still under 20. And uh, I think uh, just, you know, recalling it, just, I think being there, it's just put a stepping stone and the confidence to you know to go to the free state and actually be on the side, but uh, it was it was um, quite an interesting experience because um, I was training with the, the uh, team but wasn't part of the team because my brother was playing and Arnold Jube, you know so we had, there's some big names and uh, uh, I was just normally help out when there was guys injured or just opposition, and um, I was sitting one night in my girlfriend's car on a Friday night and. Um, Having a little, uh, you know, smooch in the in the car, steamed up. You know, Bluefontein was cold in uh, in June, July, and um, got a knock on the window, and it's her mother knocking on the door, uh, on the window. Um, so um, it's like uh, your mother's on the telephone, and that's what about ten o'clock at night. So of course, you know, I had to like crawl out of the car back to the house. My mom said, "Listen, you um, have to um, get on a plane tomorrow. You're playing in in, in Durban." I'm like, "Mom, you're talking crap. You know, it's not going to happen." Um, so I drove home and then uh, the next morning, you know, everything happened. Um, I think we uh, left the, the Bluefontein by a uh, private plane. This was uh, some jet plane they had sorted out from one of the sponsors, got there, 
in Durban, you know, had like a bit of an escort to get to the game. I think, you know, the game started about two o'clock. We just before the main game and just got in the changing room. Very much like I'll tell a story later about uh, playing the first game for uh, Grace Sons. And then, um, you know, half an hour later on, on the field and playing, you know, um, at fullback. Uh, yeah, had a great game, scored two tries, you know, you couldn't ask for a better dream start to a, to a, to a, to a game. Amazing, amazing, very good. Um, I think for us, your story becomes really interesting in 1991 because you're speaking with uh, John Robbie about wanting to go overseas. Um, what, why, first of all, were you looking to go overseas? Is it is it an opportunity to play, play more rugby, uh, considering the situation in South Africa at the time? Yeah, yeah, what what was uh, what happened was uh, you know I think that um, you know South Africa not playing international rugby and they were busy with like a junior Springbok side against the Springbok side and um, Hockard just uh, spoke to me because he knew John quite well, my brother Hockard, and he said to Robbie, you know, uh, John, uh, isn't there maybe opportunity to come play club? You know, there's not much happening in South Africa, uh, and at that stage I was like, you know, what this. There's Donny Gerber, my brother. There's a lot of guys. And I thought, you know, I'm a youngster, maybe just go overseas. So that's when John actually, I think, phoned Grace Jones and said, listen, there's an opportunity. Um, so that's how it came about. I went and right. saw uh, John before we, I left and just had a dinner with him and had a chat and about the club and the memories, you know. And, and, and so did you know John through your brother? Because I know John lived in uh, Johannesburg, but you're in yeah. Bloemfontein. So there's it a bit of a distance there. Yeah, at that stage, I heard my brother was playing against uh, uh, Trans in the old days, uh, Transvaal, you know, there was called Transvaal that, um, and then, um, you know, he and John became mates there, John Robbie became mates through there, yeah. Okay, okay, very good. I, uh, I'd love to speak to John, uh, if he's watching this, I'll, uh, I must get in touch touch with you, I'd love to have him on the show. Um, so, what what was he telling you about Greystones then? Was he, was he saying this is a great place to go, or...? Yeah, no, you know, I think it was more just the memories and the club, you know, and, you know, the, the history of the club. And, you know, I think it's just, I think what sold me was just more the Irish people, you know, yeah. you know, the friendliness and, you know, it, you know, and also just the, the closeness of the club, you know. Um, for me, I think always in sport is, you know, rugby, you want to go where, you know, there's a, a, not a tradition, but, you know, there's heart around the club. There's, yeah. It's just not, I don't want to say, it, but some of the UK clubs, you know, it's just in the middle of London, you know, there's, there's, it's not that, uh, um, how can I say? Community, yeah, 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 I know what you're saying, yeah, absolutely. So um, did you talk to anyone in Greystones before you come over? I think I spoke to Piers uh, yeah. on the phone, I think just before coming, just to organize some, you know, the flights and trying to see, to see how everything works, what must I do, whatever, but uh, not much, you know, that, that, as far as I can remember. Okay, so you fly into Dublin, um, I think it's a Friday, and the next day, you're playing UCD um, away. Look, you didn't have much time to uh, to get to know the area. Uh, do you have any memories of that first match? Yeah, I had memories from the night before because uh, <laughs> Pierce took us took us for uh, for dinner, and I think we had a couple of pints. Uh, um, you know, being a Dutchman, a South African, you know, I didn't speak a lot of Afrikaans coming from Bloemfontein. Uh, I didn't understand stand Irish, so every time I said yes, I got a pint of Guinness. So um, <laughs> I did work up with a bit of a hangover, and uh, Paul did say to me, oh, Peter, you know that you're starting tomorrow, you know, you're playing tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, and I remember getting into the changing room, and I think um, we had about 15 shouting Irishmen uh, very aggressively, um, and me walking in. So it was a bit of a, uh, you know, it was a bit of a, what they call it, a bit of a fright, you know, like, geez, okay. Um, just maybe to put my socks on softly and be quiet, you know. Um, but yeah, I can remember the game. I think it's still, uh, you know, it was raining and, and, and I think maybe it's quarter try. I can't remember, you know. But um, yeah, there's a good experience. The first start of the of, of the of of your first game at the club. Yeah. Uh, Spud tells uh, that you came in to the dressing room and you said, uh, what time is kickoff? And Spud says, three o'clock. And you said, okay. And you came back uh, ten minutes before kickoff, yeah. and then got changed. Is that was that a a, a a usual approach to matches for you back then? I think Spud has got a couple of knocks, so I'm sure his brain is a bit better than mine. <laughs> you know, some memories. So, so 
<laughs> Very good. I'm um, up outside, you know, that's why. <laughs> you um, you lived in uh, in Bray with uh, Spud and Nick Popwell. Um, yeah. Do you have any memories of, of that uh, arrangement? Yeah. Um, you know, um, used to, um, you know, a bit of space in South Africa, you know, um, Spud and uh, Nick, I think, pushed me in the smallest room they could find, you know. Um, I think it was where the, uh, where the boiler was and everything. So it was just, <laughs> I felt like Harry Potter. No, I'm joking. Um, but um, no, it, uh, you know, I think starting, you know, suddenly living in a, uh, in Ireland, smaller houses, uh, three you know, big men, you know, okay, well, Nick were a bit bigger and then Spud and myself was a smaller one. Um, you know, it was a great experience. You know, it was, I had to do it by myself in the daytime, but, you know, at the nighttime, you know, having a, a, a chat around dinner table, you know, eating uh, sweet and spuds, and you know, that, that's all you, you had basically every night, except some meat. And but, um, um, but it was great, you know. I think that you know, you just you know, was talking about rugby, and you know, I think it was nice with Nick being around international, you know, just experiencing that, you know, for a youngster like me, it was it was great, you know. Um, yeah, and uh, did, did you work over here? Uh, we were not allowed to work um, uh, over in uh, we I, I did go to some construction sites, but um, uh, did some work, you know, uh, quietly around, but not too much, you know. That, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, Spud tells me that uh, you weren't very fond of the, the cold weather here. Is that right? Well, yeah, I think some <laughs> days it did too, yeah. No, that, that, especially the training in the corner of uh, Greystones, you know, that on the second page, um, you know, it was always muddy and slow, and you know, I mean, I think coming afterwards in the showers, and uh, I think they forgot to 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 heat up the boiler for the hot water, you know. Um, so um, yeah, but I, you know what? I, um, if I look back, you know, it's always you know, those memories just made you, you know, a better person, and and you know, um, you know, when you, you you when I went to other countries and played and that, so just actually you just you get used to it, and you know, you know, this way of life and the way of culture in that, in that country yeah yeah absolutely um you had a pretty successful season uh with greystones that you would win the floodlit cup um you'd beat clontarf in the final and uh, then a few weeks later you win the all ireland floodlit cup uh against malone do you have any memories playing under floodlights yes i remember yeah that, i think it was a big thing for in for greystones uh to play on the floodlight if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah yeah but but yeah, um, I can't remember now we played on the Flatlands South Africa, the stadiums, you know, I, I just can't remember, but I, I remember those games, you know, um, it, it, you know, I think for, from a team and I think the one, the one game we played, we played Gary Tashman's team, Clontarf, okay. they, I think we played him in one of the pre-games as well, wow. um, and meeting afterwards, but yeah, I, I think those, those night games were actually different. Fun, than yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I still got a mug, you know, with a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you still have it, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, I know that you'd said before you were playing against uh, Irish internationals when you were playing here in Ireland. So you were playing against, you know, Brendan Mullen or Jack Clark who, who were playing for the Irish team. Did that give you confidence as a young 20, 21-year-old playing against top internationals over here? Uh, no, of course. I, I think, you know, um, I think for any youngster um, playing, you want to prove yourself against the best. And, you know, um, and I think then, you know, they were the Irish, um, um, you know, internationals and you were like this youngster and like, you know what, if I can be better than him, if I can beat him or, you know, I can, you know, then, you know, it means, you know, um, not saying they're not great players. It's just, in, you know, I can play in the same arena. Shows where you, you are, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it gave me confidence seeing him then playing, you know, they're playing in the World Cup that year. Uh, and I'm just saying, well, yeah. you know what, I can do it when I get back. I think that, that was the stepping stone for me to just have that confidence of going back to South Africa and so I'll stuff it, you know. doesn't matter if it's a Donny Kaba or whoever it is, you know, I can actually just, I can make it as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, a, there's a famous story about uh, you playing against uh, Dolphin. And the uh, opposite centre is Jack Clark, who played for Ireland. And uh, you scored a try. You ran over him. And uh, you turned around and said, uh, maybe next time bring a torch. You might see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember saying know. that? <laughs> I think the story is it's not 100% right, you know. Um, 
<laughs> it's a good one, though. It's a good one. Um, the, 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 the big match for you playing for Greystones is um, in 1992. It's against Black Rock. Um, mm. Greystones had to beat Black Rock to keep the hopes of getting promoted alive. Um, yeah. Black Rock come to Greystones. They have stacked with internationals. Brendan Mullins playing, Nile Woods, um, Stephen Bashup, the All Black, is, is yeah. out yeah. half. Uh, the game's actually televised um, with Jim Sherwin on commentary. Jim actually passed away there a couple of uh, months ago. But the clock is in the red. Uh, Blackrock are winning by four points. And Bashup misses a clearance kick. Victor McGannity catches it. He gives it to you. And you cut through the entire Blackrock defence and score under the posts. I mean, is this, is this a, a memorable game for you? It must be one of the top, uh, top memories for Greystones. No, as, as you mentioned it, you know, you, you, you can see in your, in your, in your mind they're playing it over. So, um, yeah, I, I remember that. I, I think, you know, we, we were so with the underdogs in that game and, you know, it was a, a close, I remember this, how close it was. But, yeah, I think it's just, you know, um, I think we just, we, the side was just growing in confidence, um, you know, uh, throughout the season. And I think, you know, just not kicking the ball out and, you know, just that confidence to run, you know, I think, you know, I think that's what made us, you know, a good side then to to go through to the, the you know, for all Ireland, you know. So um, mm-hmm. I, know, uh, I remember. <laughs> I just wish there's some a video of it. Or I mean, I know, like I know, I know. Yeah, it's unfortunately there's not much. It was uh, all black and white back then. <laughs> well, you can make the VHS, you know, the, or not even before that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Beta Max. Um, <laughs> So uh, the next week, actually, Greystones do get promoted. They, they beat CIYM, but you weren't playing that game for a very good reason. Uh, you receive a phone call to come back to South Africa um, because you're picked to play for the Springboks. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts here. Um, in the 1980s, there's a sporting boycott on South Africa. Um, and in 1990, there's a referendum which lifts... Um, apartheid regime. So 1992, World Rugby allows the Springboks compete in international rugby again. So the first match back, uh, the opponents chosen are the All Blacks. And it's hard to overstate how um, important this match was, not just for the South African rugby team, but I think for the whole nation, because it's, it, it's, it's an, an, an outward showing to the world how much South Africa has grown. Um, it, it's enough to make anybody nervous, but for you, it was your debut match. What's going through your head this week as, as, as a young man playing your first game for the Springboks with all this noise? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, just remembering, you know, I think we, we were only allowed the, the week before the Monday to to assemble for, for, for the test match. So, you know, um, we played some trials and beforehand and then you know they say okay well you know what the Springbok side has chosen but it was about two weeks before that but we couldn't we couldn't train we secretly actually met up you know just over that weekend just to just to just to get a bit of training you know and and just have a bit of a run before you start but uh, that whole week you know I think South Africa was buzzing in the sense of uh, you know just rugby is back it's, it's you know it's great you know and um, you know, on the street, and you know, you couldn't walk on the street because everyone could, you know, because you know, Springboks are back. You know, they knew who you were. Um, but it was a it was tense week because um, you know, there's a lot of questions being asked. You know, in, from a polit- political point of view, you mm-hmm. know, journalists, and so and, and you had to be careful because we were still, I think, trading on, uh, you know, trading where where everything is going. South Africa it wasn't, you know, <laughs> a cut down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was a very tense you know, and a very close. Um, we kept it very close in the sense that we don't want it to, you know, let this disrupt us. But if you if you look fast forward to the game day, you know, looking at the at the crowd and outside and the, that pride that was back, you know, in the spring, you know, for seeing the spring box back and people, you know, Ellis Park and getting to the to the stadium itself. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I think. Looking back, it just yeah, I was great for the nation. Yeah, there were some uh, things that happened on you know, before the game, and you know, um, the you know we did sing the, the old anthem that wasn't wasn't done. But I think 
um, you know, you, you can't take it back, but it, I think it was so important then just for that time to, to, to happen because of the pride. And you can see, you know, some people just, uh, you know, like real farmers crying, you know, just because it's back, you know, but, you know, things that move on and quickly. Uh, but I think it was just a start of, you know, moving forward in South Africa. And, yeah. you know, sport was always that catalyst or rugby were one of those catalysts. Um, it's amazing to think there's 72,000 people at Ellis Park you're playing in front of. Only a few weeks earlier, you're playing for Greystones. Like, was this, was it difficult to step up the standard from Greystones to all of a sudden playing for South Africa against the All Blacks? Is that hard for you? You, you, I, you know what? I think the, the moment took over and you didn't have to, you know, I think that that, that 70,000 people just carried you, when you, you as you ran out and that, that you never, you know, worried about it. I think you had, like, it's almost you had the people behind you, you know, you had 72,000 plus of people on TV. So I think in that prior to play your first test, I think it's just much bigger than, you know, uh, you know, I think worrying about, um, uh, about you know, the, the occasion, I think, you know, I think, I think most of the players will say internationally at the first game, you don't remember much, you know, maybe a bit some pieces of it, but um, yes, yeah, so it's always that one that just it goes like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, Alan Keyes, who you played with in Greystones um, was playing golf with Zinzan Brook. And he asked Zinzan if he remembers the match. And he said, I do. Peter Muller scored a try on his debut. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're one of only a very small number of people that have scored a try against the All Blacks on your debut. I think Campe David Campesi did it for Australia, but uh, not many others. So a nice, uh, a nice way to, uh, to start your, your international career. Um, for much of 92, 93, 94, you're, you're the starting centre for South Africa in almost every game. Um, 1994 ends, funnily enough, uh, playing against the Barbarians in Dublin. And yeah. your old teammate, Nick Popwell, was playing for the Barbarians. Um, yeah. But did you, uh, did you come back to Greystones on that trip for a visit? I think that was the last trip. That, that's where I went back. I think we went back to the club that night. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, and, uh, was, yeah. But also, I think I met, met Spud and them as well in, in Dublin itself. I think the, the, a couple of days or one of the functions or the uh, receptions we had beforehand. Yeah. Very good, very good. So a few pints back at the uh, the clubhouse in, uh, in Greystones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. I must admit, it was so. Um, so I think it was, it was night time. You know, it was just it would have been nice to spend a bit of a day or two. Yeah. You know, I was thinking afterwards, but uh, you know, to stay a bit longer. But it was so difficult. You know, it was so strict. You know, you know, yeah. you need to come back to the team. You need to do that. You know, um, uh, I think it would have been nice to have a little break and just had a walk around. Yeah, maybe another time. Who knows? Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, you get injured shortly after this and uh, you'd missed the 1995 World Cup. Um, there is an interesting story, though. Uh, I don't know if you know this one. Um, so in uh, the quarterfinals of the World Cup, Andre, or no, sorry, against Samoa in the pool stages of the World Cup, um, Andre Joubert breaks his hand and he, uh, he's injured for, for, for maybe the rest of the tournament. But at the same time, um, the Greystones Rugby Club doctor Brendan Cudahy, who would have been the doctor, I think, when you were there, had yep. had developed a uh, a glove for hurling, um, mm -hmm. and this glove had a protective padding on it. So he sent it over to Andre Joubert, and uh, he was able to play in the semi final and final with the glove on. So um, a nice little bit of uh, of history. If you couldn't play in in, in that tournament, at least some something from Greystones was there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, still this glove that was over it was quite a not green a hard case, but yeah uh, green one, yeah, yeah 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 it's a nice uh, nice little touch um but i think you spent maybe three and a half seasons um out of the south african team following your neck injury but your return game is um hard to to make up it's in your hometown bloemfontein against ireland 13th of june 1998 um, do you have any memories of, of, of your first match back? It must have been pretty special for you to get back in the Springbok team. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I think um, I um, the going a little bit back as well. Um, you know, going to, uh, from being injured to going to play a bit of rugby league uh, for a year, and, you know, like jumping to Toulouse. I was a bit of a rugby um, prostitute, I think, or just you know finding your way. But um, 
you know, just in 1997, uh, just also just we would have gone on a tour with Springboks, you know, the shoulder, I think shoulder injury. So, you know, it took a bit of time to get back into the side, you know, um, I think with Nick Mallet being the coach, you know, and just saying, just get ready, you'll be on the side, you know, you'll be in the group and it's, let's, you know, just get ready, you know. Um, but looking back at it, a game, it's always nice to go back to Bluefontaine where you started, you know, you're playing in the white jersey, um, that, yeah. that was special. Um, so, yeah, I think just coming back to it, just, and, uh, you know, it, it was a, you know, I think a memorable game of, you know, coming back and being at Bluefontaine. I think you mentioning it, you know, I think we quickly forget, you know, that match, but in, in what, what the significance of it was, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 1998 is a big year for South African rugby. Um, you'd be on the team uh, regularly from that point forward. 17 match win streak. It was world record at the time. And you also won the Tri-Nations uh, tournament. That started off uh, with a victory away to Australia. Yusuf van de Vestes and scores a try um, to win 14-13. I want to ask you a little bit about playing with van de Vestes because it seems like in this era, he just scores tries every single game he plays. Is that right? Yeah, look, I think he was just one of those, you know, all-time greats, you know, that's going to, um, he, I don't think he was the best skilled player in a sense, but he just had a feel for the game, you know, you know, his, you know, his, his pass, you know, his passing off, you know, from, from the scrums, you know, um, wasn't, wasn't the best, you know, wasn't the most powerful, you know, wasn't the longest or, his box kicks were not, you know, precise if you look at the scrum ups today, but, but he had speed, he had something special that just read the game where there's a hole, you know, there's space, uh, uh, you know, anticipating, the, you know, the, the, the game basically. But, mm -hmm. yeah, what a, you know, he was, I, I room with him before that, if I'm in 94, 90, you know, early 90s, so we became good, you know, roommates as well, you know, so you understand the guy, but Naughty off the pitch, but uh, what, a, what a brilliant player on the pitch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, following week, you go to Wellington and you'd, you'd beat New Zealand. I don't know if you saw, but recently there was an interview with Nick Mallet on Supersport. And he was talking about that game. And he said the four players that uh, that won that match, Yus van der Vestes and Henry Hannibal, Peter Muller and Andre Snyman, because you guys were so big, so powerful, so strong that, that Nick knew if Lomu came down your channel, one of the four of you were going to smash him back. Um, yeah. It has to be nice to hear that from Nick Mallet. <laughs> yeah, that is, it doesn't give a compliment very yeah. often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no, he's not as, you know, he's not as bad, uh, you know, when it's to do, you do, but um, it, when you, you do stuff up, he, he will let you know in very um, uh, creative words, you know, um, what he thinks of it, you know, so, uh, but no, um, I think that that test match, I think, uh, was the last one on a, a right in Athletic Park. You know, it was right on the hill. Oh, yeah, normally yeah. Those day, you know, it's either the game is of two halves. But I think that game, we I think we just were so solid in defence and uh, because the All Blacks were pushing and pushing and pushing. But I think they just couldn't score, you know. And I think we the try that Peter um, was so scored that yeah. day, we actually... Uh, Henry Honeywell came up with it on, 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 on a Thursday and said, listen, why don't we just do something because they're expecting Peter to, to go inside and, and let's just do something different, you know, and we actually just popped it on this on a Thursday and when the opportunity arise, you know, um, I think that was just changed the game a bit, uh, but it was still close, you know, I think um, there was a, also a charge down um, of one of our kicks and I think, you know, or there was a kick that was kicked through and uh, what's the fullback's name with the blonde hair? Uh, uh, Wilson. Yeah. Jeff Wilson, yeah. yeah. I had to just kick the ball over the line, but I think if we had to look today on the on the TV referee, that could have been very close to a try, you know, but because yeah. the referee and the touchdown couldn't see it, they just see you kicking the ball over, you know. Um, <laughs> so it's small margins, but it all counts, eh? <laughs> Is it, was this your first international against Lamu? Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah. 90, yeah. Yeah. And what what what's it like playing against him? I mean, what two meters tall, hundred and twenty five kilos on the wing, amazing. 
all you do in a hockey, you make sure you don't look at him. Eh? That's all you get. <laughs> you tell your winger, this your guy marking to look him in the eye, not me. <laughs> I'm not going to look at him. Very good. Um, I, a big sorry, unit. I the, you know, it was a big unit, I think, you know, just trying to stop him and, you know, not giving him space. You know, I think that, you know, the only way you could have stopped him, you, you, I think you, you saw in the World Cups, as, you know, with the England inside, with any space, he was just like a steamroller. You know, you're not going to stop him. Amazing, yeah, yeah. Um, the return test is in Kings Park, Durban. Um, with 14 minutes to go, South Africa are losing 23-8. In 10 minutes, you score three tries, Van der Vestes and Bobby Skinstad and James Dalton uh, to win 24-23. Um, I actually, I watched the game uh, on the weekend before talking to you, and right at the end of the game, you chase down maybe... 80 meters, and you, you corner uh, Justin Marshall and uh, keep him pinned back in his in his 22. Um, do you remember much of this game, winning uh, at such a dramatic time? Yeah, I, I, you, you do because I think it's one of the good. Uh, not, I wouldn't say I must be careful using the word great, but I think it was a great comeback for us. You know, sitting at half time so far behind. You know, I think uh, you know sitting in the change room, and I mean, Rassi sitting there and. Henry Honeyborn and, you know, in Afrikaans, we're just basically saying, shit, are we going to get back from this, you know? Um, and Nick coming in and doing a, 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 a Man United, uh, Alice Ferguson kick off of bottles of water, you know, of, <laughs> of anger. But, um, yeah, you, you know, he said some harsh words and, you know, I think nobody said much, you know, we got on the pitch and I think, Again, you know, like the US uh, just ignited something and it's just a spark and something, yeah. you know, that 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 lull that you had in the first half and the beginning of the second half, suddenly just the confidence came back, you know, and then like, well, no, we can do this. And you scored the first try and it just happened and happened. And I think, you know, at the end, all you're trying to do is close all the turnstiles and gates so nobody can run through. Um, the next week, you beat Australia quite convincingly. And for the first time, uh, South Africa win the Tri-Nation Series. Um, it must have been um, a pretty special day for you. Yeah, I th I, it was. I think we, we, we were confident going on that side after being all blacks yeah. twice, you know. Um, we knew, um, you know, uh, certain areas where we want to attack the strengths, you know, where the weakness was. Um, and I think we, we, we knew that we could, if we can cut them down, especially, you know, inside centre fly up, you know, the, the back row, you know, we could, we could we had a chance, you know, and uh, luckily I think that game, everything just started falling in place, you know, in, in the sense what you, you analyse. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, again, it's just one of those feathers in the cap, you know, that you can put in there and you had a great game and a great series at that stage. Absolutely. Um, the following year, 1999 World Cup, um, you're picked in the squad and South Africa win their opening pool games. And in the quarterfinal, you play England. And um, you must have done something to Yanni De Beer because he doesn't pass to you in the game. He just kicks five drop goals. <laughs> what happened uh, there? <laughs> um, you know, the, the story was actually we were talking on the Thursday. It was the Thursday as well. I think a lot of uh, good stuff come on a Thursday and your captain's practice or now Fridays or... Um, but again, we were looking at, you know, what happens here, you know, we look at history and, you know, with uh, Nick and they say, that it's always close to these games, you know, it's going to be a penalty, you know, it could be a drop goal, but what can we do, you know, if it's last minute, we're attacking, you know, in our half, we knew Yannick could kick from, you know, from halfway line onwards, so it was just a matter of how we can do it, and we were trying to, and we know um, uh, Lawrence was, you know, we need to, to suck him, if we can suck in Johnny, you know, so we thought of, you know, as, as you crash it up, you know, you'll, you know, you'll make sure Lawrence, you, you hold him down on the floor with Johnny, run at Johnny, if Lawrence tackle, hold him down, and then we try to pull some guys into that ruck, just to, to make sure that we got a bit of space if we only have to fall back and, and drop, but I think we started off the game, you know, hitting it up and, and Johnny's channel the whole time, and we found that Lawrence was, and they were sucking in, I think they were like, okay, well, that's, that's the game plan, I think what happened over up was for Yanni just to have space to kick. And I think that just continues to happen and the confidence grow again, you know, to 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 to, to do the drop goals. And uh, I think it just again it's just that the momentum of you know you you're ahead and it's going and we we, we had the defensive on them. We, we were strong on that side. So and then I think you know one or two you know the try that changed, you know, one 
I think US try to change also the game day, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, uh, Yanni De Beer scores five drop goals, but um, then the next week it's a drop goal that knocks you out of the tournament. Uh, Stephen Larkham scores from the halfway yeah. line. Um, do you think looking back, this is a big missed opportunity because you have to feel going into the final, you probably would have beaten France. Um, yeah. they felt, felt like they probably had played their best game the week before against New Zealand. Um, is this, this one of those ones that yeah, you look back and regret? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And I think, um, you know, it's not bad, I think Nick, I think uh, Nick and them still the selection because uh, Henry Honeyball was injured that game against England. Um, they were, I think, a few months of playing either Henry or, or Yanni. Um, and I think what um, the, the Australians did against us was basically what we did the year before, you know, we had they attacked. I was saying Yanni was weak in defence. I think it just they, they knew there was a channel that they can attack, drawing me in again. So, and and it's sometimes what is difficult to you pulled in and they played the quick ball. Um, and I think what happened was that we just never got that momentum, you know, and defensively we just was going backwards. And I think they just grabbed a hold on us the whole time. You, you, I think that game we never felt. Yeah, you know, we 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 were we were catching up all the time, catching up, you know. And uh, look. It's what happened the week before, and you get Larkham that <laughs> the ball is sideways like that, and you kick it over. Um, you know, good to the, you know that's what World Cups are for, you know. But um, yeah, I think we had a missed opportunity, you know, on, on different factors of the of, of you know selection, you know, the way we maybe should have played and that. But you know, what it, it is, what it is, you know. Yeah. So yeah, um, the next week is uh, your last game for the Springboks. It, it ends where it began against New Zealand. Uh, this time you score and uh, you 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 win the match though. Um, but I'm wondering wh- wh- why did you decide to 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 retire from international rugby after the World Cup? You were only just turned thirty. I, again, you know, um, at that stage, but like players being thirty, you know, um, you know, they were like looking at yeah, they they're getting old, they're not as fast, and and also um, you know, I, I think you know. The South African rugby and the coaches were saying, you know, what you know, you know, we've already been saying, you know, you, you know, maybe, you know, we don't know what we're going to look at to next year. We didn't, have, but there was no future after after that, that World Cup in a sense of of Springbok rugby, you know. Um, so it, it was a, it was a two way thing. And you know, do I do I move and go and play overseas again and enjoy my rugby, or you know, stay at home? Um, we had a dismal year in two thousand with the Sharks. Um, and I just thought, you know what, um, I, you know, not having a great season, you know, you know, I think something was put in your head that, you know, you're 30 plus, you know, it's maybe time to go overseas, you know. Um, so I think that was the move. And when I uh, was in 2000 with the Barbarian game, Neil, uh, Neil Jenkins and Rob Daly, we were chatting on the bus and, and asked me, listen, why didn't you come play for Cardiff? Um, at that stage, but I've already had an offer, I think, from London Irish, but then I th- it came back to, where do you go and play rugby? You know, rather in, in Wales, where it's, you know people love their rugby, or do you go to England? You know. Uh, so yeah, so a, yeah. That, that that you you could go to Cardiff and then you'd end up um, spending uh, maybe four seasons there. I think yeah, you yeah. you retire then two thousand and four, and and that'd be the end of the road for uh, your, your 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 rugby career, and uh, also the end of the road for 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 our uh, our talk today, but. Um, yeah. I guess I just I do want to ask you though, um, when you look back on your career, um, you you you're you're happy with the decision to come to to Greystones, nineteen ninety one. No, of course, I think, yeah. Like I said earlier on, it's my, my you know my stepping stone, you know, and it's, the, the memory is just great, you know. Um, you know, I'm, like I'm talking to you now, my hair is like I don't have a lot of hair, but you know, you get this good goosebumps on your on your on your, on your hair, yeah. But uh, that that was the start for me, you know, for for where I, I you know played rugby and for me going forward. So yeah, it was a big stepping stone. Great, great. So I'll ask you the same questions I ask everybody. Um, what what's your favourite memory playing for Greystones Rugby Club? Uh, yeah, I think the first one I will never forget. I think, and I think the the last one was the Black Rock game, and I think that's those are the two memories that sticks in the head. You know, um, the you know, the, the, but again, also the floodlight. But the last thing I must say, driving up to Belfast and going through the checkpoints was one of my nervous moments. In, 
And of course, when you have spud and everyone asking where's your passport, and then they're going to check and they're going to frisk you. And that was the, I think, the most nervous time for a youngster, you know. But uh, <laughs> awesome fun, awesome. Well, yeah, different times. Um, and who's the best player you played with at Greystones Rugby Club? Played with or against? Play, uh, played with, played with at Greystones. Look, I think that whole side in, 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 in you know, uh, when we played, you know, there were some great players, you know, I think that, that I don't think there was, like you say, we, we were not superstars, we were just great players and, you know, in the positions that, that was there, you know, and I think Spud, you know, was such a passionate player that he was always leading, you know, um, so I've got a lot of respect for him, you know, and, and also then as a captain. Very good. We leave it there. Peter Muller, thank you so much for getting in touch with us. Thank you for, for, for coming on today. And who knows, maybe we'll see you back at Grace Arms Clubhouse one day soon. You never know, you never know. And all, all the best from a sunny Cape Town. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>